This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, so let's begin to look at indirect tax. Uh, and within the notes there, you've got plenty of definitions and plenty of terminology. Okay, uh, But what I'm going to do is just going to draw up a separate page of paper just to go through there and try and summarise things. And then you can copy it down if you so wish. Uh, you can just observe. Uh, it's up to you. Okay. Uh, so what we've got there is we're looking at indirect taxation. Uh, what is indirect taxation? Can you remember from the introduction? Yeah. Okay. It, it's a tax that, that's levied on on one part of an entity, isn't it? Or if you like, one part of a business that is then uh, passed on. Uh, to to the, the government, isn't it? And the prime example that we had there was that we spoke about was it sales tax, wasn't it? Okay. Uh, so what you've got there is indirect taxation works essentially in two ways. Uh, you can have the indirect tax based on a unit tax. Oh, that's an awful straight line, isn't it? Uh, and also indirect tax based on what's referred to is an ad valorum method so a little bit old school a little bit latin there uh, coming back to haunt us from our days at school if you ever studied latin okay a uh, key bit about your unit tax is that that is a tax which is based upon the amount of goods that, that you are purchasing okay uh, so what you've got there is that that is based on a number of units so it is a tax may be based on an amount of tax that you pay per kilogram of goods. Uh, it could also be the an amount of tax that you pay uh, per se 1,000 units. Okay. Uh, so it's based upon a unit, isn't it? Okay. The number of kilograms or if you like, just simply the, the number of units. Okay. A uh, prime example that, that you have with regards to your indirect taxation there is going through and looking at, is it your excise duty? Okay, so that's whereby you, you pay a tax uh, on the, the amount of the commodity that, that you are purchasing. Okay, so maybe you are buying a litre of spirits, you will pay an excise duty, a unit indirect tax. Uh, on that litre of spirits. There will be an amount that you pay incorporated into the, the final price that you pay for the goods that is the excise duty. Okay. You could also as well, I suppose there as well, have an import duty. Uh, that, that if, the, if the goods are imported from overseas, you will also be paying an import duty as well as if you like an excise duty. Okay. A key bit about your, your excise duty there is that that excise duty, if I can squeeze it in, is also a consumption tax. Because you are purchasing the goods, you are consuming the goods, you are consuming the spirits, if you like, or consuming the cigarettes or, or the, the tobacco or the, the oil, whatever it may be. Uh, so the excise duty is a unit tax. It's an indirect tax and it's also an example of a, of a consumption tax, isn't it? Okay. Uh, ad valorem indirect taxes uh, are whereby it is a tax uh, based upon the value of the goods or, or the value of the services. So, you know, in the UK, we have sales tax. It's referred to as VAT. Uh, you pay not based on the, the amount of the kilograms that you're buying or the number of units. You are paying a rate, aren't we, of tax based upon the value of the goods, isn't it? OK, so if you buy goods that are a thousand dollars net of tax, obviously you wouldn't pay dollars in the UK, but everything in the SEMA qualification is dollars. So if you paid a thousand dollars net of tax, the total amount with tax on top, 20 percent on top will be one two hundred. So that there is an ad valorem, if you like indirect tax so one that you've got there is your sales tax 
uh, and again when you're thinking about your your sales tax that is also a consumption tax isn't it because you are consuming or you are buying or purchasing the goods uh, and then what you have there is other ad valorem ones are there is it as your property tax uh, so maybe the government charges you a tax based on the value of your property uh, so whether that's the land or whether that is the buildings uh, in the uk we, we, we tend not to have a, a property tax uh, on on the owner okay uh, there is if you like a tax on the the people who are, are using the property uh, and that's referred to as council tax okay but there's no if you like direct property tax on the owner okay council tax falls upon the person who, who is using the premises uh, and then what you also have as well is that in some jurisdictions uh, there is also a wealth tax okay uh, so the richer you are the richer the value of your assets uh, you will pay tax on the value of those assets i think uh, there's a wealth tax that, that exists in france uh, you know but it is only uh, appropriate for, for the super wealthy uh, if your assets are, or your overall net assets in france are worth i think the last figure i saw was about 1.3 million obviously that will change depending upon how tax rules change in france but if your assets were worth 1.3 million that would be nice wouldn't it okay uh, to have that amount of assets uh, if that's the case then you would pay tax on a particular amount of those assets i'm sure there would be a relief given uh, and you would pay tax on the net amounts okay uh, but again the tax is based upon the value of your wealth okay the value of the assets that you own okay there we go so that's just a brief introduction in terms of what indirect tax is i think it just summarizes it up there doesn't it maybe a little bit better than just going through there and, and, and talking about the bullet points okay but again uh, it, it's bits and pieces that you need to go through and learn okay uh, because again objective test questions could say that uh, excise duty is an example of which types of tax uh, well it is again it's an indirect tax isn't it it is a consumption tax and it is a unit tax okay uh, so so just be aware that it could similarly say a wealth tax is an example of which of the following well it is indirect isn't it, uh, it it's not a, a consumption tax because you are not purchasing the goods or services you already have it uh, but it is an example of an ad valorem tax okay yeah so again practice uh, the most important thing isn't it uh, let's just go through there and focus a little bit more specifically on the one that the syllabus wants us to focus on which is sales tax or the vat sorry to be all uk but you know that's what we have here value added tax okay again we've already said there that it is indirect it is also a consumption tax and also as well uh, it is an, an ad valorem tax isn't it because it's based on the value of the goods that you are consuming okay uh, again key bit is that it is a tax on the final consumer of the goods so to the final consumer of the goods it is there isn't it going through and looking at your effective incidents isn't it okay uh, the formal incidents falls upon the company that is collecting the tax to pay to the government okay uh just be aware we're not expected to know the different rates for the uk uh but you are expected to have a knowledge of the different types of rates that, that could potentially exist within your jurisdiction okay uh you could have what is referred to as your your standard rated uh so that's your day-to-day -day goods that you buy and consume in the uk the standard rate is 20 percent uh seems to be fairly consistent across europe at 20 percent uh but that's your, your your standard normal rates so that's what you normally pay on your food uh on your drinks on the clothes that you go through and buy we'll talk about specifics and intricacies in a moment uh it could possibly be that there is a higher rate on higher valued goods uh again in the uk we don't see much of a a, a higher vat rate it tends to be standard rate or, or something else okay uh, in the uk rate the standard rate it's usually 20 percent, but for, for some goods it does change uh for commodities gas electricity i think it falls to about five percent okay but it's still referred to as the standard rate uh you've then got is it the zero rated 
and is it exempt okay that they are very 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 similar okay uh, zero rated means that there is no VAT charge on the goods a uh, common example that you've got there tends to be in the UK children's clothes okay it's a bit unfair isn't it uh, to, to tax the consumer of the good the child if you like the, the family of the child when the child is growing and will need new clothes new shoes on, on a regular basis I've been there, okay, yeah, cost a fortune for your child, you don't want to have to pay a tax on top of it as well, uh, so, so, so clothes, children's clothes, I should say, are zero rated, okay, uh, this then brings in all sorts of weird and wonderful intricacies in the, in the UK tax system, uh, books are zero rated, so there is no VAT uh, on your books, but e-books, they are standard rated, okay, so you would pay tax, or you would pay sales tax, if you were to purchase an e-book uh, as opposed to going through there uh, and purchasing a, a, a paper copy of a book. There are probably some weird and wacky, wonderful reasons for it. Uh, other one that you've got there as well, I think, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, we said standard rated applies to foods. There are particular foods that are zero rated. So I think frozen foods uh, are, are zero rated in the UK. Uh, my other favourite one is that your standard rated apply to potato based snacks so crisps uh, but if you get maize or corn based snacks so in the uk we have this i call it a crisp but technically it's not a crisp it's called a monster munch uh, and monster munch is a corn based snack and that's zero rated so i don't pay uh, tax if you like i don't pay sales tax on, on my monster munch but there we go uh, and the other my, my, my overall favorite one is i need to get this the right way around is that standard rated uh, falls upon nuts that are not in shells okay yeah so your dry roasted peanuts are subject to standard rated vat but nuts uh sorry nuts that are out of shells yes that's what we said wasn't it yeah so your, your dry roasted peanuts they are subject to standard rated however zero rated are when the nuts are in the shells okay So there we go. Uh, it's a bit, bit strange, isn't it? OK, uh, so uh, let's just move on. Uh, exempt supplies uh, that you have tend to be bus fares, rail fares and train fares. OK, uh, so, so, you know, there's still no tax upon it. But what's the difference between something being zero rated and something being exempt? OK, uh, there's no obvious difference, as it says there. Key bit is that if you are involved in zero rated supplies, you can register for VAT. So if you are a book seller, okay, you can register there for VAT, which is important because when you sell the books, you can reclaim your input VAT. Okay, so the purchase of the book originally, uh, when you bought it from your distributor, you can reclaim that VAT. Okay, however, if you make wholly exempt supplies, uh, then you cannot register for VAT. So if you are a bus, a train, maybe a taxi company, uh, your fare is exempt from VAT and therefore you cannot reclaim your input VAT. OK, uh, but just note, we have used the word there, haven't we? Wholly exempt supplies. OK. Uh, maybe some of the supplies that you make might be not just wholly exempt. Uh, you know, there might be some things in your business that you supply. So maybe you are a train company. Uh, the fare to charge the passengers is exempt. But maybe on, on your, your train journey, there's a little shop. And on there, there is some food. OK, the food, the drink will be a standard rated supply, won't it? So therefore, you will be able to register for VAT because you do have some standard rated supplies, but you will not be able to reclaim all of your input VAT. You can only reclaim the input VAT on, on, on things that relate to the standard rated supplies. So, so that's, if you like, talking about, as it mentioned there within the notes, your partially exempt trades. It mentions the entity conducts several activities, some being standard, some zero, some exempt. Uh, the key bit is that you can register for VAT, but your right to offset the input is restricted. 
okay uh, so you can reclaim your input tax can't you uh, as we said on, on standard rated or zero supplies uh, but uh, if not uh, then you cannot reclaim it on anything to do with exempt supplies okay there we go uh, again let's go through and just bring it in uh, with an example okay excellent uh, so what we've got uh, the example all about VAT uh, it wants us to calculate the amount ABC should pay uh, assuming there to be no other VAT related transactions uh, so it says AB is resident in country X so all the old exam questions always referred to as country X I think things have changed now with the objective test question that they give you specific rules in each specific question uh, but monthly VAT returns are required at the end of each month AB pays the net VAT uh, due to the local tax authorities uh, so what you've got there is in the last month, AB purchased raw material costing 120, excluding VAT, uh, which is chargeable at a rate of 15%. So the sales tax that you would be looking to reclaim is 15% of the 120,000. Is that there as 18,000? Okay. Uh, the raw materials were converted into two products, X and T, so they are our saleable products, which we would hopefully then charge VAT on. However, just be careful, product X is zero rated and T is standard rated. Okay, So there's no exempt supplies, so we can go through there and reclaim the VAT in full. Uh, but don't forget product X, there's no VAT on it that we are collecting so when it talks about product X was sold for 90,000, it would have been sold for 90,000 and 90,000 only. Uh, there will be no VAT on top of it. Uh, however, product T uh, was sold for 130. Again, that's excluding VAT. So when you're looking at the VAT on that, 15% of 130,000. Uh, if my mental arithmetic is still holding right, that gives me 19,500, doesn't it? So I have paid input VAT of 18,000. I have received output VAT of 19,500. Uh, the net amount that you have to pay is the difference, which is 1,500. Okay, uh, excellent. Uh, once more, just a little bit to note, just above the example. Hope you're happy with that example. It's nothing too exceptional, is it? Just be aware for the, the zero rated supply of goods. There's no VAT upon it. Uh, but just be aware if you are reclaiming your input VAT uh, and you have your partially exempt trades, if you're looking at you know things that are incurred in the production of the goods, heat, light expenses, uh, and your incurring VAT at standard rates and if you like your zero rate the key bit is your exempt rates you would prorate the amount that you can reclaim based upon the amount of supplies that you have made which are exempt standard and zero rated so whatever the exempt proportion is you would not be able to reclaim that input VAT but I do think that's beyond the scope of the calculation that within this exam the the, the questions that we've seen in the past uh, have been pretty much as simple as that example that you have there. So practice a couple of questions on sales tax, indirect taxes. I don't think you can really go too far wrong.